We're talking to Ryan Spann now, who's kind enough to join us following his massive win. Hello, Ryan. How are you? Oh, I don't hear you. Is he muted? He's muted himself, yeah. Can you hear me now? Ah, uh, yeah, you're back. How are you, Ryan? Uh, my bad, my bad. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations on the recent win. Congratulations on the winning streak. Um, man, there's a lot to talk to you about because I, I, I find your story to be very interesting, but I have to almost start with what you said at the end. I don't, I, I just want to say, I believe you're in that. I don't believe that that was your first training camp. I don't know how that's possible. You have an incredible coach. Do you, can you take that back? I feel like you need to take that back. There's no way that that was your first training camp. Okay, well, they want me to take it back. Um, <laughs> Luda, did, did Safe get mad at you for that? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, come on, excuse man. Me, man. Excuse me, excuse me. Um, well, the truth is, it was like my my first full camp, really. Uh, I've trained before, I guess. Uh, no gear, I think I trained for that fight. There's been a handful of fights that I may have trained for. Um, one of my my first amateur title fight, I think I trained for that one, but that was still for about four weeks. But for the most part, man, I just, it, it'd be fat training, man. I'd just be trying to cut weight because I get big. How big and do you get? With, uh, I get pretty big. Uh, let's see. Uriah always phrases it the best. He'd be like too big. Too so. big. <laughs> and, and, too big. And what do you do to get so big? Eat. eat. I like to eat. Yeah. And, and just naturally, I'm a big guy, so it, it's not hard for my body to want to carry weight. And what was like, what's your favorite thing to eat after a fight? Like, since you're a big fan of eating, like, what do you really indulge on? Okay. It might, it might be right next to him. He's <laughs> indulging as we speak. Oh, Cheetos. That's your thing. Oh, Chester's. Yeah. Oh, che yeah. Is it Chester's or yeah, Cheetos? Chester. Chester. It's Chester's. What's the yeah. difference? I, I, is that like the bootleg um, version of Cheetos? No, 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 no. There's, it's like a different brand. Oh, really? It's, wow. It's completely different brand, yeah. But it's the same type Cheetos of thing, right? Cheetos are more known. Yeah, it's the same thing. Hot chips. I'll eat them both, but those those are my that's, those are my go to. That's your vice. <laughs> yeah. How long after pretty, a fight? Pretty bad, pretty bad. How long after a fight do you eat that? Like, do you have it on the night? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, usually, they'll be waiting for me when I get back to my room. Oh, sick. And and, and yeah, how yeah. how far out do you have to stop, and how difficult is it for you to stop? Uh, this last time, it, it was pretty easy. I thought it was going to be harder than what it was, but uh, my nutritionist, Eric Kenya, he would kind of incorporate Tips into like my diet. Really? So, <laughs> yeah. Wow. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, does this have anything to do with the fact that, uh, unfortunately, like the one blemish on the weekend was, you know, the the weigh in on Friday? Is it because of the chips? No, that's no, no, that's completely unrelated. Like, so when I first came on, you saw me cough. I've been sick. I've been sick basically the past two weeks now, I think, and. I'm just now coming out better. Like I even sound better now. Like yeah. if you listen to me talk after the fight in there, like I was nasally, like I was trying to breathe the entire time. So I was, I was sick and it just, I don't know what was, what was going around. Uh, I had some kind of, I don't know if it was upper respiratory infection or sinus infection or something mixed with like flu or something. I don't know. Oh, damn. I don't know what I had, but I'm, yeah, I was, I was all jacked up, so I couldn't sit in the sauna. Like, the last day, we were supposed to do sauna, and the cut was going smooth up until the heat. And once I got into the heat, it would, like, the first Thursday, we did, I was so sick, I started taking a Z-Pack Sunday. I couldn't do anything until either, either Wednesday night. Wednesday night, I jumped rope for, like, five rounds. Thursday, I was able to hit mitts a little bit, trying to cut weight with the bag on, and we did that twice. And we noticed every time I tried to move, like I just couldn't. Usually, I cut like that, and like I'll do that between the sauna. But I was losing weight, and I was fine. And we just I couldn't breathe while I was hitting mitts and stuff. So 
we were just like, all right, tomorrow we're going to wake up and we're going to do the rest in the sauna. And I had like three or four pounds when I woke up. And I just couldn't tolerate staying in there without throwing up. Without throwing up? You were throwing so, up? After, yeah, mucus and all that stuff. Uh, like everything yeah. was so dry or whatever. I just couldn't. Every time I got in there, like I was probably in there for like five, six minutes. And then all of a sudden it just started. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah it, was, it was bad. It was, and how did you feel on the night? Uh, on the night, I was good. I woke up and I did some, uh, what you call those, a neti pot. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I did that like twice to try to clear out some of the stuff. And I just was trying to thug it out. Yeah, you because know, my faith never changed the entire time. I knew yeah. even though I was sick, I was like, I just, I just need to get there. And once I get in there, I'll be fine. You know, I just had to get there. You must have been thrilled, yeah, I though, him, that I was like, the fight was a short fight, right? So you didn't have to kind of test your cardio. That must have been a blessing. Um, I knew, I knew it was, I knew it was going to be like that. It, it was no real surprise from the work that we put in. Because, like I said, it was my first time actually training for a significant amount of time. I think it was like 12 weeks. And wow. they, you weren't, you weren't telling me nothing. Like, I knew I wasn't feeling good, but man, nobody was going to tell me I couldn't do nothing. Is there any? And also, I couldn't. I decided not to cut my hair with this, the point five. Oh, you know, so that cost me a little bit. Yeah. Was, it, was that under consideration? My hair? Like, were you guys talking like, "Yo, if you cu- if you cut this hair, you'll make the way"? Like, did did someone try to convince you? No, they they were they they my coach uh, and my nutritionist. It was like, "Yo, you know, we need to we need because we couldn't dry it, and I was still sweating. Like, I was uh. sweating great." Like the weight cut would have been perfect if I wasn't sick. And it was like, hey, you're still sweating. Your hair is wet. Let's try to dry it. So my brother tried to dry it a little bit. And then somebody brought up some clippers. And yeah, I wasn't having that. Fuck that. I'm sorry. But my kids ain't never seen me without my hair. Uh And I'm not about to cut it like that. You know, especially after I did all that work in camp. I knew I wouldn't have missed weight. So it was easier for me to accept that why i missed it so i just had to bite that bullet because i wouldn't i wasn't cutting it and and, never option in my mind great performance just curious like knowing how the fight went out went down and potentially you get 50k but you don't get 50k if you miss weight like is the hair worth 50k to you in retrospect it's worth a lot more than that all right a lot more than respect It it never i never changed man look i I've had it for, I think I cut it one time when my oldest, he's now 10, was a baby. And that was the last time I cut my hair. So wow. my kids, I have three now, have never seen daddy without hair. And I wasn't going to just pop up on them. Hey, yeah. surprise. You know, like it's going to be a thing if I decide to do it, which I doubt I will. Is there any particular reason why you don't cut your hair? Um, I don't know. I just always loved my hair. Like, having like a native family like hair has always been like a thing that like our hair was great and with my tone growing up you never know you yeah know, until you see like the great of my hair and that's when i was like all right let me keep my hair everybody else got all the cool shit like the eyes and yeah. different things different features like i just got some hair so i'm gonna protect that so which side of your family is native my mom's side wow and uh did you grow up you know, around that culture or was it a different kind of upbringing? It was different. <laughs> Excuse me. It was different. I didn't really find out until later and made me, it was my hair that actually made me start asking questions. If somebody saw my hair and was like, yo, yeah, you know, your hair ain't supposed to look like that. Like what what's going on? So I started asking a bunch of questions and found out. Yeah. That's okay. Why. Um, and, and just curious, like, uh, obviously the results speak for themselves. Are you going to be doing training camps from now on? Are you not going to let yourself get too big? Is that the plan? We, yeah, no, we, we're already training now. I, I went back to training Monday. Like I knew my goals, my goals were to be first on the scale and back in training Monday. And we missed the scale one, uh, from un- unforeseen circumstances. And, but I still was back in the gym Monday. And we're back training now, you know, trying to be anyway, just doing the best I can do with what's going on with me. Is there any uh, part of you that feels like you would potentially be further along in your career had you been training more often? 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what happened there. I was like, man, I feel like I wasted a lot of my 20s. Um, I, I did, you know, athletically, you know, because I didn't really take it seriously enough. Like, I knew how good I am and I knew how good I was. Everything has always came so easy. So I decided, I, I ain't going to say I decided, I was just too immature to realize that, like, my brother would always tell me, like, yo, you need to be able to back your skills up with strength and conditioning. And that's uh, why, you know, like I could kick people in the head and why stretch, right. you know, and it just kind of snowballed from there, but we got it under control now. Safe give you a lot of shit. I mean, he's kind of a no nonsense guy. I, I can't imagine that he was too happy about this. <laughs> no, no, he's not like he, he always, he always give me shit and he always kind of on me about it. And I'd be like, Coach, I got it, I got it. But then I'll come back and get hurt or something and mm. end up leaving again and coming back bigger and basically the same cycle over and over. And he, he's been patient with me, and it's about to pay off for, for all of us now. Uh, initially on the night, I thought that you dropped Dominic Reyes with a jab, but you said afterwards that that, that was a 2-3 that you dropped him with, right? So it wasn't so much... A 3-2. A 3-2, excuse me, a 3-2. Um, yeah. Nevertheless, were you surprised that that was what finished him? No. No? That's what the coach was... If you hear him... Uh, hey, you ain't about to give it away. Kennedy kind of gave away some of the codes. But we we knew it was it would be there. And... All I had to do is basically believe in myself and trust in my training, which is what I was saying the whole time, which I did. And I knew I knew it was going to be there. I just had to kind of be fast instead of always going out there to bang and rushing. Like That's one thing. That's why I was like, I needed that miss in retrospect because, you know, sometimes I'll kind of get in, the, in a situation where I'll just see red and we're, we're – Hey, fuck it. We about to fight. We ain't here to fight. Let's fight. And me knowing that I couldn't get that bonus because I put a lot of weight on that bonus. I knew I knew when I got the fight that I was about to bonus on him. And I, I had a lot of, I mean, I spent that money already, you know, like in my uh. mind. I, I, I was ready for it. So when that first little situation happened, I was like, all right, well, let's go get them because before – it was, I knew I wasn't going to be in great shape when I go into these fights. So I would try to end them as fast as possible. And sometimes that'll put me, a lot of the times that'll put me in trouble too, trying to hurry up and finish them. But now knowing that I've trained for 12 weeks when I went in there and I heard him for a minute and I thought, I, I thought, I didn't know how bad it was. And I, when I saw him kind of get ready to throw back at me, I threw some heavy at him and I can hear a coach telling me to chill. And I was like, it's cool. I got it. I got it. And kind of calm myself back down. So that was me knowing that I wasn't going to get that bonus. So it wasn't no point in me rushing. Is is there any, um, like, is it possible to put into words what it's like to have a performance like that, a finish like that at Madison Square Garden? That That's different, right? It's not, that's not, that's not T-Mobile. That's, that's MSG, man. Like, does that mean anything to you? Um, if I'm going to be real with you, it didn't. Like, uh, it didn't register where I was until I got back. Uh, I know before I left, my dad was saying, uh, you know, just to kind of soak it in because a lot of the times I get so disconnected from this stuff, man, that um, he was like, soak it in, enjoy it. Like, that's that's a historic place you're about to go to. Like, people his age, and my dad's like 60-something, you know, that, you know, they, they would be dreaming of fighting there and all that. And he's like, you get to go do it. And uh, I was like, okay, you know. All I do, I was like, I'll come back with the dub. So that's all that mattered to me. I didn't really care where it was. I go fight in my backyard right now. They're going to pay me. Right. <laughs> it, it don't matter. I don't care who watches. By the way, um, prior to the, the the winning streak, you had the fight against Anthony Smith. Uh, Anthony does a, a podcast with Michael Bisping. And I, and I, I think he still has, I don't know. There seems to be some animosity there between you guys. What is going on here? I heard him say a thing or two. Sneaky, Last sneaky, week, sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Look, I've never said that man name, and I'm still not about to. You know, we uh we moving on to some other things. We got some things going on in house right now that we're trying to worry about. Man, we ain't worried about nothing on the outside like that. 
Okay. Could I just ask why yeah, is there animosity? Is, is, and look, I don't know. I don't know what his problem is. You know, I don't know why he's bringing my name up. All I said was I wanted two numbers. That's all I said. You know, even in the first time when I said his name, I said I would want the winner of this fight when he was fighting crew. I said both of their names. I said the winner of that. Right. At no point have I ever called that man out. Okay. But the time will come where uh the time will come, but right now we're we're uh we have some in house things that you know we're that got the more pressure matters that has our attention as a team. I at this point right now it's not even about me, but it's all good. Okay. Do you- so whatever 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 he has, he have he his time will come. Okay, fair enough. Uh, do you, do you, would you like to say what that is, or do you want to keep that in in house? Um, and I totally understand. I just, you know, I don't want someone sitting at home being like, "Why didn't Ariel ask this?" So, if you want to keep that in house, I totally respect that and, and understand. Yeah, I think I got the okay to say it, but at the same time, it's, it's tough. You know, cause, yeah, yeah. It cannot is my boy, man. That's my brother, and. To see what he's been going through for so long, you know, uh, we got a call today saying that, you know, his mom passed, which is why he couldn't do the show as well. Yeah, I totally understand. Uh, and I, I, I don't even know really how to, how to, how to express anything really, because at no point, you know, did Kennedy ever, he ever complain or. He loved he loved his mom. Like he'd come to the gym, and if she's not doing good, he'd have his phone sitting beside the mat and get propped up. So if it rings, you know he's there. And he'd done this for years. You know, like I know, you know things were turning and and stuff for for you know I would ask and you know he'd just still have a smile and he's like God has a way, brother. You know. And it just—I hurt for him, for sure. You know, I—I I, I don't, I don't know. That it's hard because that—that's that's one of my biggest fears in life, and you know, he has to live it. And I don't know what to tell him, or I for fighting, I can give him advice all day. Mm-hmm. I, I've been doing this shit since I was a baby, like. But now it's like I don't know what what to say. Like even when I found out, I all I could do, I was like, man, I have no words. So I just text him, I'm like, yo, bro, I love you. You hit me up if you need me. It's just, it's a tough situation. No, uh, it's it's a tough situation. So we kind of just asking everybody, kind of respect him, respect his privacy, his family, you know. Uh, and hopefully he take all the time he need and come back and do what he needs to do after that. Yeah, and our best to his family and uh, what a performance from him on Saturday. Uh, and so my my heart breaks for him and I and I hope that he is doing okay, all things considered. And and I appreciate you saying that about him. Your team is on fire these days. The team is looking great. What a coach you have. What a leader you have. He was on a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I know you're, you're focused on, on the team right now, but for yourself, it seems like you've just scratched the surface now that you've decided to start training for fights, uh, several fights at your UFC career. How soon would you like to return? Um, we are just going to keep this thing rolling. Uh, I've, I've finally let them tell me, and I guess they've been telling me that, you know, staying in shape is a lot easier than having to get in shape. Yeah. And. I can kind of see what they mean now. Well, not kind of. I actually do see what they mean. You know, been working with Mike Skacia. And he, he's he been telling me for a long time. He's like, man, you keep blowing up. Like, this This is how those injuries happen. Like, I've been hurt going into almost every fight since Alvi, I think. Like, Alvi, I had a broken ankle, torn stuff against... Uh, Devin Clark, like I, I was just, I was all jacked up, like, and then a lot of that comes from going from zero to a hundred in training, 
Yeah. You know, so I, I've kind of cleaned up my act, so to speak, uh, and decided to focus, you know, all in on this thing instead of just living by the seat of my pants and just reacting to certain situations life hand me and missing out on cutting corners and training, you know, just because of how athletic I am. Cause, you know, it's, I'm a bit distracted right now. I'm sorry, but, uh, but it, it's going to keep rolling. We're going to keep going. We actually working on something right now. Okay. You don't want to tell us who that is, right? Uh, we're trying to get seven. We're trying to get seven. I got to fight. I got to fight two times just to get to seven. So I guess since they only moved me twice for whatever reason up to after putting the previous seven where I was. So yeah. I think we're trying, I think we're trying for seven. I like that. I like that very much for those that don't know off the top of their head, seven would be Nikita Krilov at the moment. So, uh, that would be interesting. Uh, Ryan, you're doing great. Congratulations on the win, my man. Uh, my best to you and the team. Thank you. Obviously my best to Kennedy and his family. Thank you for coming on amidst a, uh, a, a very difficult day for you guys. So I, I appreciate it very much. And, uh, Look forward to having you on in the future as well. Thank you. All right. There he is, Ryan Spann, who's uh, on a roll as of late, number 10 in the UFC rankings.